This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. In this part, let us study about the gravitational constant. The value of this uh, gravitational constant that is uh, g entering the universal law of gravitation can be determined experimentally and this was first done by an English scientist uh, whose name is Henry Cavendish in 1798. So we know that the uh, law of gravitation says that f is uh, equal to g m1 m2 by r square which means uh, the gravitational force of attraction is directly proportional to the masses of the two bodies and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and here this g is called as a gravitational constant which remains constant and uh, we can determine its value through an experiment that is called as Cavendish experiment. The apparatus used by him is uh, schematically shown in this particular figure. This is a schematic sh drawing of Cavendish experiment. S1 and S2 are large spheres which are kept on either side which are shown in shades. So here S1 and S2 are large spheres. You can see them which are in the shaded portion S1 and S2. So this S1 and S2 are kept on either side of the masses at A and B. See when big spears are taken to the other side of the masses which is shown by this dotted uh, circle. Here S2 dash and S1 dash. So, when big spears are taken to the other side of the masses, the bar AB rotates a little since the torque reverses direction. So, at that time, this uh, bar AB it starts rotating okay, due to the torque in the reverse direction. The angle of rotation can be measured experimentally. Okay. So here the bar AB has uh, two small light spears attached at its end. Okay, this bar AB is having the two small light spears which are attached to it and the bar is suspended from a rigid support. You can see that support here. Okay, by a fine wire, two large light spears are brought close to the small ones. Okay, uh, first two smaller spheres will be there again or two larger uh, spheres are brought closer to the small ones but on the opposite side okay on the opposite side as uh, you can see in this figure the big spheres attract the nearby small ones by equal and opposite force so there is no net force on the bar but only a torque which is clearly equal to F times the length of the bar, where F is the force of attraction between a big spear and its neighboring small spear. So, due to only torque exists now, there is no net force of attraction. So, due to this torque, the suspended wire, it will get twisted till such a time as the restoring torque of the wire equals the gravitational torque. So, it will rotate until the restoring torque equals gravitational torque. Okay.
so if free storing torque is equal to gravitational torque then this rotation stops if theta is the angle of twist of the suspended wire if this uh, restoring torque if theta is the angle of twist of the suspended wire then the restoring torque is proportional to theta which is equal to tau theta where tau is the restoring couple per unit angle of twist okay tau is the restoring couple per unit angle of twist tau can be measured independently for example by applying a known torque and then measuring the angle of twist the gravitational force between the spherical balls is same as if their masses are concentrated at their centers thus if d is the separation between the centers of the big and its neighboring small ball and m and m d is the separation between the big and small sphere and m as well as m are the masses of the big and small sphere then the gravitational force between big and small sphere we can write it as f is equal to g m1 m2 by d square isn't it and if l is the length of the bar then the torque arising out of f is multiplied by l so at equilibrium that is equal to the restoring torque so we can write it as g m1 m2 d square l is equal to the restoring torque that is tau theta and this observation of theta thus enables one to calculate g from this equation so using this experiment uh, since cavendish experiment the measurement of g has been refined and currently accepted value of g is uh, given by 6.67 into 10 raised to 11 newton meter square per kg square this is the value of g uh, since this is the experimental setup we know all the values the masses the value of l theta torque and d so we can calculate the value of g so after calculating the value of g we will get it as 6.67 into 10 raised to 11 newton meter square per kg square so this is the value of the gravitational constant that is g acceleration due to gravity of the earth see the earth can be imagined to be a sphere which is uh, made up of large number of concentric spherical shells with the smallest one at the center and the largest one at its surface a point outside the earth is obviously outside all the shells thus all the shells exert a gravitational force at the point outside just as if their masses are concentrated at their common center according to the result which is uh, stated before okay so all those spheres will exert that gravitational force on the point which is outside of that sphere the total mass of all the shells combined is just the mass of the earth if you combine the uh, if you combine the masses of all the spheres then that gives the mass of the earth isn't it so at a point which is outside the earth the gravitational force is just as if its uh, entire mass of the earth is concentrated at its center 
for the uh, you know point which is inside the earth the situation is different now we told about the point which is situated outside the sphere if the point is inside the sphere so you just consider this uh, figure which is shown here so again the earth is made up of uh, concentric shells and a point mass m is situated at a distance r from the center so a point mass m is situated which is uh, see here this point mass at a distance r from the center of the earth the point p lies outside the sphere of radius r this point p lies outside the sphere of radius r isn't it so for the shells of radius greater than r the point p lies inside if the radius of the other shells if you consider a sphere somewhere here then for those points or for that sphere this point p lies inside isn't it so according to the result which is stated they exert no gravitational force on the mass m which is kept at p means uh, the point which are outside this point p okay whose radius is greater than this radius r they exert no gravitational force on this point p the shells with the radius less than or equal to r make up a sphere of radius r for which the point p lies on the surface so the smaller the sphere therefore it exerts a force on a mass m at p as if its mass m r is concentrated at the center so inside this sphere will exert the gravitational force on this point p so the force on that mass m at p it has a magnitude we already know that is f is equal to g m one more mass we are considering it as m r by r square okay we assume that the entire earth is of uniform density and hence its mass is given by that is mass of the earth it is uh, given by 4 pi by 3 r e q rho where m is the mass of the earth and r e is its radius and rho is the density on the other hand the mass of the sphere mr of radius r is given by 4 by 4 pi by 3 rho r cube okay for the mass of the sphere mr of radius r and hence the force becomes in that particular case gm we got the value of mr that is uh, 4 pi by 3 rho r cube by r square so we can write it as f is equal to gm m e r e q r q by r square isn't it so we can simplify this so it will become g m m e by r e cube into r so if the mass m is uh, situated on the surface of the earth then at that point we can consider r is equal to r e isn't it so again this f will reduce g 
एम ई एम डिवाइडेड बाई आर ई स्क्वेर इज इट इट सो द एक्सिलेशन विच इज एक्सपीरियंस्ड बाई द मास एम विच इज यूजली डिनोटेड बाई द सिंबल जी इज रिलेटेड टू यफ बाय न्यूटन सेकेंड लॉ दैट इज यफ इज इक्वल टू एम जी so g is given by f by m so we can write g is equal to g m e by what yes r e square this is the value of g acceleration g is readily measurable r e that is uh, is a known quantity quantity and even the measurement of g by cavendish experiment combined with the knowledge of g and re enables one to estimate the value of me we know re g and even small g will get the value of me this is the reason why there is a popular statement regarding cavendish cavendish weighed the earth that is nothing but mass of the earth okay